there we go. Welcome to the F chord rabbit hole. And as you know, you've, if you've been watching along, if you haven't, we're running a 60 beats per minute metronome in the background so that we can observe the passage of time at 60 beats per minute or, you know, one click per second. So here's the F chord. And then this is a little different than all of the other ones, you know, because this is the first chord that we learn on the guitar, on the guitar, depending on, you know, the, the area you're from. Boy, how do you pronounce guitar? Guitar. So I've got that F chord happening and I've got a little strum pattern. Again, a bass note and the chord unfurls on the top. Now we could be more, you know, quickly about strumming through the top three strings, but that'll, take, that'll tend to speed us up through the metronome. So we just gotta be aware of that, that click and try to match that each stroke with each click of the metronome. And I want to start saying this earlier. If you haven't, if you don't have your guitar, now is a great time to go get it and tune it up, and then you know pause and come back and do whatever you have to do to get caught up. Caught up, but um, these lessons are intended for us to play together on. So I invite you to do that if you'd like. F. So this is the first chord we learn as guitar players, really. That doesn't have really have any open strings. We have an F note, an A note, C note, and an F note. And we strum that. We could just just strum. And every downstroke we strum, we probably want to start messing around with an upstroke. Because an upstroke is a function that we need to get good at too, right? So don't forget the upstroke. I don't mention it in all of my chord videos, but the upstroke is as important, if not more important, than the downstroke because we're programmed to build things from bottom up, right? From gravity's pulling us down, so it's really easy for us to drop down here and arrest our arrest the forearm after we strum, right? But to make that upstroke sound the same as that downstroke, I'm kind of gonna figure out where the pick needs to stop pick needs to stop on the string after I can hear those four notes being plucked and then I come to rest on the next larger string underneath the D string. And that's the that's only practice. That's only accomplished through trial and repetition. Really it's basically do it as slowly as you can until you have that muscle memory and gradually build it up. This might take a week depending on how much you practice it. You know it could take a couple of days, could take an hour get good at that. So where I'm going with that is we have a downstroke and then an upstroke. And I usually have a really sloppy right hand technique. But if you were going to be a recording guitar player, maybe we want to take a closer look at refining our right hand approach, you know. Okay, so there's there's that. We have two more strings to deal with down here. We have an, you know, another A string in open position, which is definitely F, A, C. Oh, fuck. Fuck, right? Part of my, it's my favorite chord spelling, almost. So we've got that open A string in the bass, and it really changes the sound of the chord. This sounds like home. This sounds like we're going to step away from home. It's still the same neighborhood. We could also use that third finger to move along from that D string, choke it out by rolling that that fatty part of the third finger over the D string. But you can get that C chord, that F chord with a C note in the bass as well, all right here in open position. Notice my left hand thumb coming up over the back of the guitar now. That's wicked bad, wicked bad technique, but if you wanted to, you could throw that thumb, wrap it up over fret one on the low E string. Good 
setting because there's a string skip built into this. If you can do this and hold it, there's a beautiful string skip built in between the E and the D strings. So we have that octave skip with down, up, down, up, down, down, up. Oop, not the most comfortable thing to do, but you get stronger and stronger every time we do this. So the more we grip that chord, the, the, the more likely, likely we are to find it accurately every time, right? So we'd break it apart, shake it out, <clears throat> re-grip. Everything pretty much rings except for the, I'm choking out the A string with both the, the fat part of my thumb and then the tip of my third finger, right? So we got that down, up, two, and three, and four, and a basically a down, an alternating picking sequence, which is a forward roll into a reverse roll. So we'd call this like a combination roll or something like that. And two, and T, and four, and one, and two, and T, and four. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to just check this out. bass notes. I've got to rethink this pattern here. You can see that you can hear my guitar is a little out of tune because I'm gripping some some strings a little too hard, you know, because I'm using some bad technique. The technique that I would recommend um, when we're not doing this sort of Jimi Hendrix, that kind of stuff, I would recommend maybe using um, the thumb, you know, in a consistent manner, you know, down on the back of the guitar neck. And we get this really nice equal distribution of power between fingers one and two and three. So the thumb is sort of always in the middle of those two, those two extreme fingers, equally distributing the powers. My third finger is a little weaker than my first one, so I'm gonna sneak my thumb a little closer to finger number three. And that's how that works typically, right? And then let's take a quick look also at the F major scale because we're right here in open position. So we've got F, A, F, sorry, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and then E, and then F. And then we have F, G, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. And then if we're really good, if we're really in time, some people say that we lose sight of the metronome and it just disappears between the click, the tag, or the... You know, when we're in synchronicity with the metronome, it could take years to get there, you know. Um, that's what they say. But we have an F, an E, a D, a C, a B flat, an A, a G, and then an F. Then we start there and then descend to F, low E and back up to F again, right? And then we move back up to finish from once we came, to the place from once we came. So we got this nice F major scale right here in open position while we're playing the F chord which is pretty darn convenient So we 
could create all kinds of really cool things. One of my favorite chord, my, my favorite chord voicings ever is right here in the open position, right? And it's, and it's one of two of my favorite chord forms on the guitar in its entirety. And they're all contiguous strings. And it's right here, you know, we're, we're using the F3, the root to, so we would typically be using it in an F major triad, which is what this video is all about. An F, an A, a C, and an F, as we discussed at the beginning of the session. An F, C, A, and an F. And then we have, um, scaled tones or scaled degrees that we can add in place of those um, triadic tones. So for now, I'm going to add the two, the G, the open G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the open seven. So I'm going to use the one, two, five, seven, the old one, two, five, seven trick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the old one, two, five, seven, and just a beautiful way to sort of like just sort of stretch out on the guitar in open position. You can introduce that open A string. And it gives it that sort of, well, kind of felt like we needed to go back to C there, but we're gonna stay on F. We could use that F major nine chord with an A in the bass, and it's still the same quality chord. But now we're gonna, uh, maybe we use the, the G or the two of the F major scale in the bass, and now that becomes a G chord, you know, or an F major nine with a G in the bass, and that's still an F major nine because G is the two and it functions as the nine. So, or we could get all funky and call it a G, what is that? Like a G7, a G7 sus with an added six or 13, maybe some kind of 13, some kind of 13 chord or something like that. Um, you know, it's like spooky, man, like Atlanta rhythm section spooky, but it doesn't really sound like that. It doesn't really sound like that 13 voicing that we're used to hearing. It's much more open sound and, and then, but we're choking out the open A string. And then, you know, we've got a beautiful sound here. This is a good way to a good place to start practicing alternate picking again, re reapproach it, and, and we have a shorter, a more contiguous string group. So we could do one and two and three and one and two and three. And I noticed, I just noticed my thumb was creeping up out of place. So I'm drawing it back to the back of the guitar neck again. So it's straight up and down you know, from the floor, and it's also, you know, vertical, uh, perpendicular to the floor, the plane of the floor, and then it's also sort of in the back of the guitar neck, and it's spanning, it, it's basically the in the middle of fingers one and three. kind of a Lydian mode thing, but so we won't really talk about that today. But we've got an idea here. We've got that F, since there are no open strings, we can start right away moving this around the fretboard to A, to A sharp to B, to, you know, all the way up to E, and then F again. It, you know, it's a little difficult, more difficult for some of us without a cutaway, um, which is okay. We make some concessions for whatever reason, and so that F chord happens again on the top three strings in, what is that? So we're looking for F here, and then we've got F here. So we missed this place in between, right? So we've got three, five, one. This is the first, the third inversion in first position. And then the second inversion with the five, one, three, that's what we missed, we overlooked that. So that's how we use the major scale, how we get it in between each voicing of the F chord as it is inverted across the fretboard. So we have that nice, good 
Okay, so we could change, we could venture outside of the chord inversion, and then we have the same thing we can do on the next three strings down. This is sort of a George Van Epps sort of um, approach to the guitar. So we've got F here, F there, F here again, and then F there again. So we've got... So that's kind of cool. You know, the F chord does exist in other places too, but um, uh, you know, we, we can use, let's see, so F here, and we started talking about barring this and moving that up the string set in a parallel manner. What happens here is that actually is built using the E chord, right? The top part of the E. So this is actually an E position bar chord, which we're getting into. Just from the F chord, real easy, right? It's a real simple move from there to there, right? All we have to do is take that first finger and bar that and just stretch it over the six strings and then move this finger down one and add that fourth finger to cover the third finger. And then you have a beautiful bar chord. There's our beautiful F bar chord. Big fat sound. And if you wanted to, you could shove that up to F sharp. up the fretboard as much as you want and then so that's that's a great thing to know is that E position bar chord and then that E chord basically the top four strings of that E position bar chord is functionally the F on the guitar and that's such a challenge to learn this as a, as a new player you know here's another really nice F that we like to play it's kind of cool uh, another nice one is also the C shape If I use the, ski, the C chord and move it up to where the F and the bass, where there's an F note in the bass, then I can, you know, it sounds like a C chord or an F chord with an open G string, which is a nine. So it's got the three, so we'd call it an add nine. That's kind of a really cool open sound for not much dough on the guitar, right? So let's head back to the F chord and just check in to see, I'm not sure if you have any questions about what's going on here. Again, my thumb sneaking up. Um, don't let that bite you. Uh, it's a really easy thing to do. And remember posture and as usual, we remember to breathe. So we're breathing four counts in. And eventually our breath in four counts out is going to become a separate entity from our guitar playing. And our phrasing, the way I'm talking, could be the way I start playing single note solos on the guitar. So with that level of creativity, we could theoretically start working on um, strum patterns that way, right? So we know that we're using 60 beats per minute, one, two, three, four, or one, two, T, full. What we, sh we really should be doing if we wanted to professionally break this down, we'd want to start with one attack per beat, per bar, and then go through, you know, placing that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. There's one attack per bar. One and two, three and four and one and two, three. 
three and we break this up into eighth notes. So that way we have an eighth note grid so we could use down strokes and up strokes. So when we're not hearing down strokes, we're hearing up strokes. One, two, that three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, moving to the third, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Right, so we'd go displace that beat, that whether it lands on the end of one or the end of three or the end of four or the downstroke on one. We gotta go through all of those. So that's just one attack per measure. And you saw what it took to do all of those. Then we do two attacks per measure and we can start with notes that are you know, contiguous or notes that are um, not contiguous. You know, there's separate places uh, in the measure. But I would start with one, get familiar with 60 beats per minute, the F chord, because we're gonna to need to release that grip, shake it out, come back to it, and then keep strumming. So we've got one and two and T and fo and one. get familiar with the eighth note grid. So I think what we did today ooh. We didn't do much with um, F major pentatonic but that's kind of a cool thing to know, I guess, right before we wrap it up. Let's not just wrap it up just quite yet. Let's take a look at F major pentatonic. So I've got a one, a three, and a five. I've shifted up to third position, and then I've got a three and a five again. And then I've got the beginning of the next pattern. So as long as I remember that there's a one, three slide with the third finger up two frets, use that first finger back two frets up one string, and that's the... That's the major pentatonic pattern that I want to begin on the F note. So if I do that every two strings, right, I get, I arrive back at the root note one octave higher, except for the B string, because the B string's funny, you know? Okay. And then, Maybe we start ascending, you know, descending the same way that we ascended and stuff so that we remember where to slide the third finger around. But I think that's pretty much it for the F chord for our purposes today. And I hope you had a good time. I know, I know I'm having a really good time revisiting these areas of the guitar, but I, I don't spend enough time on these areas. And I really appreciate you showing up and playing along with me and, and wondering about these positions. Um, well, it's open position. Wondering about these chords in open position, you know, going down these little rabbit holes to help expand the chords that we're learning. And I hope you practiced the F chord shape where we started uh, and did all of that expanding with alternate bass notes. And maybe get that first that thumb back there if you can. You know, and remember to kind of think about those inversions that we talked about, again, here for the F chord. And then come back around to those, and then, um, you know, checking out that major pentatonic scale. And the F major scale, of course. You know, I'm not really warmed up, but that's what's going on. So we were in F today, and I hope you uh, have a great time practicing this at 60 beats per minute on your own over the week. And until next time, happy picking. <laughs>